Hello, my name is Michael Wong, and I am presenting a case on hip labral augmentation versus reconstruction. This is a case of a 22-year-old female who has had two prior hip arthroscopies. The first one was performed at age 14 at an outside institution. Unfortunately, she continued to have pain and presented to us. We performed a revision hip labral repair at age 16 and found that the labrum was retorn and she had hypotrophic tissue but preserved chondral surfaces. She did very well until age 21 when she presented again with recurrent hip pain. At that time, she had continued groin pain with normal range of motion on physical exam and positive impingement tests. There was no evidence of hypermobility and she had failed another six months of conservative management. Here are her presentation x-rays. We found them to be normal with preserved joint spaces without evidence of dysplasia or excessive femoral aniversion. These are her false profile and cross table lateral views. We were able to identify her arthroscopic photos from the first revision surgery we performed for her at age 16. At that time, we found excessive adhesions between the capsule and the labrum. The labrum itself was extremely bruised and diminutive and hypertrophic. At that time, we were able to perform a revision repair using knotless anchors and a tensionable construct. The cartilage was preserved, as was the contralabral junction. Again, she did very well for several years. At the time of the second revision at age 21, we found, again, excessive adhesions, and the labrum itself was very small. At the time of the second revision, we decided to move forward with labral augmentation rather than full reconstruction as she continued to demonstrate good healthy tissue, although extremely diminutive. We used allograft tissue using a graft pull-through technique. During this process, we used a combination of Arthrex knotless FiberTac anchors and 3.0 knotless SutureTac anchors. These anchors are specifically designed for us so that we can get them between the previously used anchors without any issues. During this time, we left the sutures free, passed the graft over the sutures, and then tensioned them singularly in a tensionable and retensionable construct. You can see what it appears to be like between left side as the graft is in and the right photo where the graft has been secured. Here's a bird's eye view on video to show you some of the 3.0 knotless suture tack anchors and how the graft sits in a hybrid model where the graft sits behind or on top of the native tissue preserving the chondral labral junction. The rationale for labral augmentation over reconstruction in this case was because the patient was extremely young with theoretically healthier tissue. We also wanted to preserve as much of the chondral labral junction as possible. There are some concerns that are theoretical. One is to leave native tissue behind that could be painful. And secondarily, adding allograft may increase the chance of postoperative adhesions, but these are unknown and we look forward to seeing how this progresses in the future. At this point in time, the patient is approximately six months out from surgery and doing extremely well with minimal to no pain and return to all activities. Thank you.